dollars and cents in association with the Intellectual Property Office of Singapore. I'm Stanley Leong with Andrew Heng. Thank you for joining us on CNA 938. Intellectual property or IP protection has been described as both a shield and a sword for businesses. And if it plays such an important function, how can businesses leverage on the effective use of IP to innovate, transform and grow? Let's now seek some answers from two organisations, DBS and Flexon, who are themselves IP advocates. We want to hear their journey and how they view IP in the larger scheme of things and in achieving business success. Joining us now on Dollars and Cents are Lam Chi Kin, Group Head of Legal Compliance and Secretariat at DBS, a leading financial services group in Asia with a presence in 18 markets. And we also have on our show today Mei Cheng, who is co-founder of uh, and Chief Operating Officer of Flexon. Now, Flexon is a global company that specializes in next generation hardware-based cybersecurity solutions as well as industrial NAND flash storage devices. So it's a warm welcome to our guests today, Chikin and May. Welcome to CNA 938. Hi, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Our pleasure to have both of you. Now, firstly, uh, both your organizations are IP advocates with DBS and Flexon, both being finalists. Uh, congratulations there of the WIPO IPOS IP for Innovation Awards. For our listeners, uh, benefit WIPO or WIPO. It stands for World Intellectual Property Organization, which is the IP agency of the United Nations. Now, for a start, Chikin and May, uh, what is your organization's position on IP? and its place in your business, in your sector. Shall we let the lady go first? May, let's hear from you first. Yeah, thank you. Um, I actually, I'm thrilled and very thankful to be able to be uh, on this program. So for us, IP is important in contributing to the two areas of our company growth or success, that is uh, sustainability and scalability. In terms of uh, sustainability, I would say we identify innovation and IP are indispensable to each other because IP is to validate the novelty of an innovation mm -hmm. and innovation needs IP to confirm its unique value. So in a cybersecurity industry that moves at a very fast pace, we need to survive and be sustainable. So we must also able to evolve our product at the same speed. So as, an, as most of the SME out there, we work with limited resources and must carefully craft our product roadmap and go-to-market strategy to be able to compete with the big boy in the industry. So the IP granted is a strong testament to game-changing nature of our innovation and enable us to accelerate the process of qualifying our innovation and solution for testing. Now, it also actually supported our scalability. Our IP portfolio enables us to go fast and go far. It has strengthened our footprint in cybersecurity market and bring us enormous commercial value. By securing our IP rights around our game-changing innovation, we have been able to expand rapidly across both B2B and B2C space. This has strengthened our company valuation and helped us attain significant support from government organizations. Mm, and that's good to know. This is good to know. But um, let's also hear from uh, Chi Kin about how DBS is viewing IP and its place really in the financial services uh, industry. Chi Kin. Yeah, thanks very much. So maybe I'll give an answer that maybe we can unpack further as we go on in this conversation, right? So I think let's take it as a given that DBS always has to look for new ways to compete and innovation is a very strong part of being able to give birth to new products and services mm -hmm. or to do things in a different way in order to compete, mm. right? One of the ways we've chosen to do this is with our digital transformation agenda, which I think we've been very public about for many years now. And as part of digital, we have realized we've given birth to a portfolio of intangible assets and intangible property that also allows us to compete. So I think the way we look about the IP agenda is that it ties back to our strategy for innovation and digitalization. And from there, we manage 
our IA and IP in order to compete better. Yeah, that's, that's a it's a it's a passport of security almost, isn't it? Um, so I wanted to sort of switch things around a little bit. How differently do you think the outcome of your business success would be if IP had been low on your company's priorities and took a back seat? Uh, maybe Chikin, you can start first. Yeah, so that's a that's a, actually that's a baseline hygiene part to this. Mm. I think everybody has to think about protecting your brand and your trademarks and that kind of stuff. And I think most people know how to do this. I think the way the conversation, however, has progressed, and we have learned from tech companies. May obviously is from a tech and engineering background as well, so mm-hmm. we do acknowledge that, right? We've learned something about. Uh, uh, innovating and also giving birth to new products and services. And from there, it's not just about trademarks and copyrights. It's actually about patents on new products and services Mm -hmm. and how those patents help to uh, improve the way you compete, drive more profitability, or how you incorporate that attitude into your business strategy. Uh, That's how we we, uh, see this. Mm. Uh, I, I'm very happy to, to listen to May as well and maybe I'll learn something. Yeah, more than a hygiene factor. May, what do you have to add on this? I, I would say that based on, you know, we are SME, we came a long way. If I were to answer this question, I would say you are still able to achieve business success with no or low IP parity, but that is going to affect your long-term sustainability and scalability as what I shared earlier. Mm -hmm. For a tech company, uh, in fact, yeah, we have been a a profit-making company. We are able to survive, but we understand very well that we're going to fall into the disadvantage at at least the two key points without IP protection. That is, uh, literally, with IP, you are able to uh, have two approaches. One defensive approach, another one is offensive approach mm. to protect your innovation and uh, the IP right allow you to take first the defensive approach to defend yourself from others, your competitors mm-hmm. as well as who actually copy your your hard earned innovation, mm. your hard so uh, it, the defensive will actually protect you from uh, your IP, but at the same time, if you have an IP in place, you will be able to build up the intangible asset. Without it, you actually miss the the intangible asset value that will bring the the valuation of the company up. Mm. And and also, there is a, a, a avenue that you can uh, make as an extra income, such as licensing. So I will use it as uh, you're going to lose out on the scalability. Right. And, Sustainability. Uh, Long term. And uh, these two offensive and uh, defensive approach will, will, will not be able to apply if you do not have IP. Mm. So, yeah, that's a very uh, interesting strategy. A interesting way to look at it. Also, um, you have it, the both the offensive and the defensive strategies have to go hand in hand in order uh, to work together and then provide that success uh, for IP protection. Uh, staying with you, May Flexon, I believe, has seventeen patterns and counting. So, how critical are these in not just safeguarding your business operations and and to spur growth, but also ensuring that your products and solutions deliver the utmost security and confidentiality standards, especially to users? To be honest, FlexZone's ultimate goal is to protect the basic right of digital citizens. Mm. So with the threat evolve at an increasing rate, cybersecurity is no longer just a nice-to-have, but a must-have solution for all. So our goal is to make the effective cybersecurity solution affordable and easily deployed. Thus, uh, I would say, the impact of IP right on consumer is equally, if not more important to us. So it might be too big, uh, the statement to claim that with IP, we deliver the uh, uh, utmost security and confidentiality standard to the user. But IP-backed solution is able to stand up as it further assure the consumer or user in their selection process. Mm. So the 
Recognition of IP right is symbolized a new revolutionized solution which is novel, inventive and industrially applicable. But to assure the user with the best solution, we also engage international testing lab to conduct third party tests and certification on our product. So our product has received common criteria EAL2 plus certification. To me, a combination of innovation with IP and certification will provide better assurance to user on the effectiveness of our product. Right. May Cheng is speaking with us. She is co-founder and the chief operating officer of Flexon. They are a global company specializing in next-gen hardware-based cybersecurity solutions as well as uh, flash storage devices as well. And joined by Lam Chi Kin, who is group head of legal compliance and secretariat at DBS. And we are all familiar with DBS, of course, the leading financial services group here in Asia with a presence in 18 markets. Uh, Chi Kin, we'd like to return uh, to chatting with you as well. If you could also share concrete examples of how your bank has has leveraged on the effective use of IP uh, to innovate, to transform, to grow the business? Yeah, sure. So I responded, uh, you know, initially by talking about our innovation agenda to compete. And then after that, how the digital transformation agenda was very, very strongly associated with innovation. Under the innovation banner, we scanned the horizon looking for big trends that we should be mindful of. One good example of this big trend is the blockchain, mm-hmm. right? From the blockchain, we look at how we can deliver products and services in a new way to our customers. For example, uh, underneath the blockchain, one of the options is actually tokenization of assets. This is why we launched our digital exchange and we're fairly public with the data around the growth of that digital exchange over time. But that's not the only use case for the blockchain. We've also launched, in conjunction with other investors, a platform for wholesale payments. We call it Patio. And we've also launched a carbon impact exchange. And all these leverage blockchain uh, to an extent. So the pool of IA and IP comes from these innovations on the blockchain, giving birth to new businesses, giving birth to new intangible assets and intangible pro- uh, intellectual property. And it's interesting that you've uh, it, what what you've uh, how you've sort of applied IP to innovate and give birth to all these wonderful new products and services. Um, to what extent, though, has this led to your bank's good credit ratings? Yeah, so I think it's quite important to distinguish credit ratings, right? Uh, Credit ratings are largely based on the structural profitability of the bank and the assessment by a third party of the structural profitability of the bank, plus its risks of, you know, insolvency and that kind of stuff. So actually, there is no direct correlation between IA and IP and a credit rating. I think the more important conversation is, does the IA and IP help you serve your customers more, making more competitive differentiation, driving more profit and therefore being more uh, 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 appealing to investors. I think May also touched on this concept uh, mm-hmm. in, in, her, in her conversation. I think that's the way uh, we think about IA and IP. Incorporate it into your strategy, show how it drives more profitability, drives customer engagement, and then after that, investor appeal. Okay, I think you've almost answered, um, Chikin, uh, the question that I wanted to ask, which would be of what word you'd like to leave listeners from other organizations who are tuning in right now concerning IP for innovation and how critical it is for organizational success. Anything else you might like to add before we hear from May as well? No, I think that's perfect. I think the key is articulate how it's consistent with your strategy, Mm -hmm. how you're competing using IA and IP, which is another tool that we should be thinking about. For sure. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Chikin. And May, your final word for our listeners? I I will still encourage all SME to see innovation and IP are indispensable to each other and they should start seriously take action to build up their intangible asset to IP portfolio. That will ensure their long-term sustainability and scalability. And if I could, uh, last but not least, I would like to thank Enterprise Singapore and uh, ANG Dr. Tan, who has been the great supporter in making our IP portfolio journey steady and smooth. 
Lovely. Thank you so much, uh, May, for joining us. May and Chi Kin. May Cheng is co-founder and chief operating officer of Flexon and Lam Chi Kin is group head of legal, compliance and secretariat at DBS. We have been in conversation with them, hearing about the importance of IAIP and how it impacts business success. Now, both DBS and Flexon are finalists of the WIPO IPOS IP for Innovation Awards. The awards celebrate Singapore enterprises that have achieved outstanding growth through their successful use of IP, IA and IP. And the winners will be announced at IP Week at SG 2022. If you'd like to read up more about IP Week taking place here in Singapore on the 6th and 7th of September, visit www.ipweek2022.sg. Thank you, Chikin and May, for joining us on CNA 938. Much. Thanks, guys. Dollars and cents.